Hi, my name is Will Golden. I'm the head brewer and co-founder of Austin Beer Works, and you're watching The Beer Diaries. Rolling fast down I 35 Through the day and past the Hey folks, Greg Zestrick here from the Beer Diaries, here with Will Golden from Austin Beer Works, hanging out in their brewery uh, talking about beer. Thanks so much for uh, inviting us to be here and hosting us. It's been delicious. Absolutely, no problem. Cheers. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so you guys have been around for about 14 months now. I mean, you've gone through lots of expansion. The scene has exploded. You guys are a huge part of it. Tell me about what the last 14 months has been like. Uh, the last 14 months have been just really kind of crazy. It's uh, the Austin beer scene right now is really kind of one of the most explosive and one of the most exciting beer scenes uh, kind of out there in the country. Um, you know, I, I'd been coming to Austin to visit for a while before I moved here to, to start brewing, and everybody was drinking a lot of great beer here, and uh, there were a handful of people producing it in the state, and I, I really couldn't understand why, and, you know, I guess we'll get into that a little bit later, but... Uh, there's you some know. there's some magic ingredients that made it happen, right? It's like it's like something happened. There are, yeah. It's 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 the people. <laughs> yeah, no, and there's great people here, and uh, consequently, great beer. Absolutely. So you, I mean, speaking of great people, you started this with with three other partners. You guys, I, have, did. I think, a lot of some friends and you know, like buddies that you say, hey, let's make some beer together. Absolutely. Um, Tell us about that. That's cool. So uh, our background kind of started out. Uh, Adam DeBauer was the first one of the group that I met. Um, I was working for Flying Dog at the time and Adam was hired on as a, a cellar man, and we started hanging out and became good friends. I moved on to work for a brew pub. He moved back to Texas to work for uh, another local brewery, and um, you know we just became great friends and really kept in touch, and we both had these aspirations of, of starting a brewery um, ourselves and stop working for somebody else. And those things really kind of started to unfold and became almost a reality, lesser a pipe dream. And he moved back to Texas and I was still in Maryland and my, my pipe dream kind of fell apart. And he, uh, he called me up one day and said I had some guys that are really interested in doing this. Uh, one of them was his best friend from high school and middle school. They grew up together here in Austin, Michael Graham. And the other one was Michael McGovern who he met in New York City when he went to school up there, grad school. and. Uh, and lived up there for a few years. They became good buddies and just really enjoyed home brewing and beer in general. And uh, so once that those those three guys down here in Texas were together and they they decided they were going to do this, they were. It was you know, on. You're saying it's yeah, on. It was, it, it, on. It, was, it was it was a done deal. They were yeah, like, yeah. yeah, we're going forward with this. And so Adam called me up, knowing that uh, my my plans had started to go south. I was working for a brew pub at the time. Yeah. And. He, he said, hey, do you want to come down and, uh, and you know, be a part of this, this actual project that's, that's really going to happen? Yeah, yeah. So I came down to visit a few times and fell in love with Austin. Yes, yeah, like, Austin Town. Yes, absolutely. Key question <laughs> was, when did you get the Austin Beer Works tattoo? You got to show the camera that. It oh, actually yeah. matches your beer real nice, but obviously uh, <laughs> you, you committed seriously. Was that when you started, like, Production or what? What um, you know? It's one of those tattoos are one of those things. They mean something to folks. I, I got my, my my old video game one. You know, we, you know, Star Wars tattoo. Yeah, right? Maybe it is. <laughs> so yours, like, what was uh, what you know? What stage did it feel like it was? It was ready. You were ready to do it. Um, it was after we did our first brew, and we were really, you know, we got the brewery actually up and going. And regardless of whether we succeeded or failed at that point, it was still a huge victory for me yeah. and the rest of us. You know, it was. It was one of those things that no matter what, I don't care if it failed or not. I, I was like, 
yes, I did this. <laughs> well, this. you did it, yeah. That's actually the same way <laughs> I felt about, the, about this, too. Um, and you guys did it, and then you did it, and then you did it, because you guys have been expanding. There's some kind of gigantic red tank out there. Like, there's some really cool stuff, and you guys have been expanded multiple times. What's, what's What's that been like? Like, it just, I mean, the demand for your beer is massive. Um, well, on top of the workload, just actually producing the beer, the, uh, the special operations and just trying to expand the brewery responsibly and uh, without just exploding too too quickly and losing control of what we've got going on has been, it's been challenging. It's been extremely challenging, but at the same time, that's that's what we, you know. That's what you signed up for, right? Love. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like, you know, if life was boring, then it'd be boring. It's, it's, you want to do something exciting. I so mean, what's, what's been like having the three partners? I mean, you guys, you guys, do you guys parcel up your responsibilities? I mean, you're the brewmaster Absolutely. or head brewer. Like, how does that, how do you guys kind of divide up what you do? Well, that's the, the great thing about our partnership is there's four of us and we all bring very unique and different skill sets to the table. Um, so going into the, the project, we all knew that I was going to be in charge of, you know, the brew house and brewing operations. Adam was going to be the cellar master and, and fermentation, packaging. And Michael Graham and Michael McGovern were the business minds as well as like uh, sales and promotion. So there was no quarrels over who was going to take what yeah, role, yeah. you know, that, that was something that was very just fluent and it, it, it just flowed right from the beginning. And we all love what we do and we share, we all share the responsibilities as well, you know, it's, I've trained the other guys to brew and, you know, they've shown me stuff about business yeah. and, and marketing and so it's, uh, it's been a really fun project from the very beginning. Yeah, well, and you guys brought, brought some kind of heavy lumber into the marketing and branding side of things. Like, obviously, we work with a notable lo local designer mm -hmm. uh, and have a really, really consistent, strong visual look. I mean, what was, what was the thinking behind that? Um, from the very beginning, we, we started working with, uh, we wanted to find a local designer here in Austin and uh, we, we ended up choosing Christian Helms, which he was the very first fellow that we met with, and it was supposed to just be a meet and greet. Uh, every, actually, I wasn't in town yet, so the three other partners got together with him, and they sat down, and it was supposed to be a 30-minute meeting. Turned, it turned out to be four hours of them drinking beer <laughs> and just like carrying on. Actually, so, that's called research in the business. It's it, called, it, it, we're doing some research, exactly, and you gotta try yeah. the product, you get intimately <laughs> familiar with it, you know? Oh yeah, it was. Uh, so they called me up after that first meeting, and they said we've got the designer. And I was yeah. like, whoa, 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 guys, we need to shop around a little more. And they just, they were like, no, this is the guy. So I flew down to to come meet Christian. And same thing, it was supposed to just be a quick meeting. No, it turned into this <laughs> alcohol fueled bro down, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, we just had a great time. And he is one of the most amazing designers, as well as one of the coolest people that I know. So it was an instant fit. Typical for, Austinite, I understand. Oh, that's, yeah. That's kind of how it yeah, works. Yeah. Every time I meet somebody new, I'm like, oh, you're my new best friend. <laughs> that's awesome. When, when you guys actually got, got public, like how did the cans come first, the taps? I remember seeing you guys on taps. And so like, Absolutely. But what was interesting and very strong about the presentation was how consistent it was. Like, was it like what was the thinking of, like, okay, how do we roll a production? How do we do it? Like, what was that? Okay. That um, well, even rewinding a little bit before we even release beer is, uh, we, we'd been in planning for almost two years for the brewery itself, and we did not want to start a web page right away. We didn't want to start just throwing it out there that we yeah. were starting a brewery. We wanted to keep it almost something a little uh, mysterious, I yeah, guess, yeah. and kind of cool. We went with like a grassroots uh, kind of approach, and we kept it very quiet. Nobody knew that we were starting a brewery here in Austin until we were ready to start sending beer. Yeah, it's, it was really market. funny because I think right when it came out, everyone's like, "Hey, I heard about this new brewery like just today or yesterday." Exactly. It, was, it was very, very like boom. So I mean, that was that was a big part of our marketing was just to you know really keep us kind of edgy. We started this grassroots thing, started handing out stickers, yeah, you yeah. know, just like little things here and there. And then you know once we were ready to go, it was just a full on you know, boom, here we are. This is what we're doing. Um, when we did the design work too, it was, uh, we didn't want something kitschy. We didn't want something that was... Well, something that would last, you know, like I think, I think there's some, there's some designs that are so... It's iconic, it's not gimmicky. Yeah, so classic and iconic, yeah. it'll last the test of time. And so um, that's, you'll see it in 10 years and you'll go, oh, I know what that is. Like, 
I, I sure hope so. Oh, I, so. I would I, be I, so I, humbled I, if that was well, true. Well, no, I, you know, it's interesting. Like, I think, I think, you know, one of the things too is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe there's been like lots of. I, I know in the beer side of things, lots of awards and notoriety to the designs, but probably even the design world in general. I think I've seen, seen stuff online about it, and it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's been really cool, and just you know, it keeps winning awards. And yeah. it was one of those crazy things when, when Christian first presented us with the initial logo the the a drop he uh we all kind of looked at it the first time and we're like huh it's really simple and we slept with it and then all of us came to the table the yeah. next day and we're like yes this is yeah, perfect yeah. there's a kind of a really cool consistency with your design and your philosophy mm -hmm. here at the brew we were talking earlier about like you know you want these beers to have like you know clean fresh crisp bold like mm -hmm. you know that's in the design. Like, what was the thinking on that philosophy? Um, the theory behind that was definitely to brew to the climate almost. And, um, you know, Texas is hot. Nine, I heard that actually. Nine months out of the year. So. Some, sometimes you'll see on camera me some doing some sweating. It's not because I'm nervous. It's, you know, well, it's damn hot here. Exactly. It's, it's quite hot this here. This helps. So, <laughs> yeah, cold, refreshing bevy. <laughs> um, so we, we definitely brew the beers to to the climate, you know, we want them to be very bold flavored, yeah. but very clean finishes, very dry beer. Because um, a, a big, you know, medium to full bodied beer is, is awesome. But during the hot, hot summer here in Texas, sometimes it can be a little, uh, I don't know, off-putting. A little challenging. <laughs> a little challenging, yes, yeah, yeah. that's a good word for it. So what's the uh, local brewing scene like with the other brewers? How do you guys all interact and get along? And what's that it's, like? It's oh. awesome. It's uh, it's probably one of the most exciting brewing scenes on, you know, in the nation right now. Um, everybody has a great attitude. There's, there's no uh, cutthroat kind of attitude towards it. Um, everybody's just really trying to make this one of the best cities for, for beer and brewing in yeah. general. And we want to become the Southwest hub of, of brewing, you know, and um, well, I think it's well on track. You know, like I mean, there's there, every month or two, there's new breweries, absolutely, new brew pubs, new great places to drink beer. Um, you know, any idea what's causing that? Like, what, what do you think's behind that? Um, I think it's just it's a, uh, you know, Austin is one of the best places to live in the country right yeah. now. Um, we have a great demographic for it. There's young, smart, uh, intelligent people that just really want to, to have the finer things in life. And You're really saying they're not susceptible to like mass advertising is <laughs> kind of what I'm quote I'm reading in a, in a positive way, but you know, like people that are interested in exploring. Absolutely, yeah. Mass advertising, I think, has very little to do with the uh, day-to-day -day -day culture in Austin. It's, uh, it's a very hip, very cool scene, very smart scene, um, and the, you know, craft beer is one of those things that goes hand in hand with that as well as fine foods, local fare in general, and just a, a really viciously local kind of drive yeah, yeah. To, to keep For everything. food, beer, I mean, even, I mean, some of the best vodka in the world's made here. Like, it's, it's crazy, but it's Austin. You know, you, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, when you think vodka, you definitely don't think <laughs> Texas, but now I do. Because, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's reasons. So in terms of uh, uh, the future here in Austin, what, what do you kind of imagine it's going to unfold? Like, I mean, we've gone so far in such a short time. Like, what? What next? Um, well, I think it's gonna, if it's if it's played correctly, if people continue to produce great beer and don't just jump on a bandwagon to to create beer because they think it's a hip, trendy thing. Um, like my philosophy is, I brew beer because I I enjoy drinking beer. I brew beer that I like to drink. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, if if everybody else enjoys the same beer as me, then that's awesome. Then I can sell it. But I think there are some people that come in and, and would brew a beer that wouldn't be as quality, just so they could just get enjoy the beer wagon, yeah, if yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. Oh, which the beer, the beer wagon sounds enticing. Yes, yeah. thank God there's there's not a lot of that going on yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. or if ever, hopefully. But I mean, if it's if it's done correctly, then we could be a powerhouse. We could be a beer scene where yeah. people literally travel to this city in droves just to come here for the beer scene. Oh, I think that's what this part of this is about, right? Absolutely. It's about, it's about sharing with everyone what's going on here. And Texas is such an amazing state to, uh, to host people. You know, we're, we've got uh, the F1 coming to town mm -hmm. and, you know, we've got such beautiful, just natural, actual, you know, landscape and, and cool people, cool towns. And uh, 
you know, I, I think it's due for us to, to yeah. get some of that play in the, the, the national beer scene, I guess. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. If I was to tell you, scree, <laughs> well, what would you tell me? I would say, scree. Scree. Because it keeps staring at There's some wall over here. It's like, what, what's going on on that wall? So scree is uh, the sound that the Fire Eagle makes. The yeah. Fire Eagle is our IPA. Nice. Um, it was funny when I was still back in Maryland, and we would converse a lot over email. <laughs> uh, we were talking about it. We named Fire Eagle the IPA, and we, we started discussing the sound that the Fire Eagle would make. <laughs> Very academic discussion. Oh, you know, yeah, like... yeah, real highbrow stuff. Keep up with me if you can. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> But we started going back and forth, and it was like trying to type out your best eagle noise, I guess. And so, and was, there, was there a limit on the number of letters you're allowed to oh, use? Oh, no, no, no. As like, many characters as you wanted, up, you know, upper and lowercase, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was pretty funny. But uh, the last one I wrote was just, scree! And it was like real long, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, three lines full of that. And uh, the rest of the guys are like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, so. it's scree. Oh, so. absolutely. I was like, well, think about it. Scree! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So maybe describe a little um, where we're sitting, a little bit of the physical space, some of the sure. unique things you guys have here. There's actually a couple, particularly you guys have a couple uh, kind of super retro tanks that maybe to call out, but just generally describe what, what we're sure. about. So we're kind of sitting in the uh, the foyer of the brewery, if you will. Um, See, that's almost the, the, the Canadian <laughs> French pronunciation, not foyer, like something like the foyer, that was solid. So we're in the foyer. We're well, the, the, I, the I was playing are. cards with you, you Thanks, know, I gotta be good to my host. There you go. <laughs> this is kind of the entrance to the brewery. We, we don't have a very, uh, I guess, standard kind of layout, if you will. Um, we're, we're kind of restricted on the type of buildings and the spots we can have breweries here in Austin. So. We, we found this awesome warehouse space that literally had a very good electrical current coming into the building and a very good water line coming into the building. And from there, we kind of built it out to, to really help us build a great brewery. Um, it kind of moves in a circle, and the layout really came from myself and Adam DeBauer, one of the, the other partners. Uh, working on other breweries, we saw things that we didn't like, so you know, raw materials in one side, brewing happens, uh, fermentation, packaging, and then to the cold room, and then, you know, finished goods, leave the building. So we wanted it all to kind of flow together, and I guess we'll kind of walk through a little bit later. And yeah, well, well actually, you. while we're talking, you'll probably they'll see some magic thanks to video, Absolutely. some editing. The, the <laughs> Copper Tank Brewing, what were those, oh, those yeah. tanks? So uh, we were doing a favor for a friend who is part of the, uh, the local brewing scene and has been for quite some time. Um, Copper Tank is one of the, I guess one of the original brew pubs here in Austin, Texas. It was in downtown, which is kind of hard to find anymore, um, right on Trinity Street. And we were doing him a favor and he, we were storing some, some old tanks for him and stuff, you know, while he was trying to get a new project off the ground. And uh, it just, came about that, you know, one of our, our hot liquor tank or our hot water tank had ended up, you know, having a crack in it. We had to get rid of it. And we asked him politely if we could borrow those tanks. And he, uh, he obliged us because he couldn't see any use for them in the immediate future. So we ended up with these cool relics. You know, there's a lot of people that come on tours and they're like, you know, oh, they wow, they, they, touch, a, they touch it. And they're yeah, they're like, like, that's got a copper tank sticker on it. What's that? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And we tell them, you know, like, yeah, that used to used to be a, a serving tank at the, the copper tank in downtown Austin. You know, it really blows a lot of people away that we have those. And it's a bit of history. You know, it's yeah, kind of, it's, 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 it's one cool. of those cool tanks that we, you know, we have. So it's a lot of fun. Cool. What is it about beardiness and brewing? I want I'm curious about the whole beard situation and why beard do people brew I think beer? It's like a prerequisite <laughs> in order to get into brewing. <laughs> I, think I, read, I read somewhere there was actually one of the states kind of put this joke law that you had to have at least three bearded people to be called a certain size of brewery, like at your place. Like, I think that may what, be true. Yeah, it's it's like Col I think it's Colorado. You know, one of those. It's cold weather and beards. You know, oh yeah. Like. yeah, yeah. Well, we you know I grew up my summer beard here just to buck the norm. <laughs> But it's, uh, it's one of those things when we interview people, we ask them if they can grow a full beard or at least some type of facial hair. And if yeah. they say no, I'm sorry. You could be the, the, the best merit person, but we're going to have to re-examine. I don't Except know. Except for the ladies. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. So I'm just, you don't you want... got me on that one. <laughs> I'm always thinking, always thinking. 
So, talk a little bit about your beers. I mean, you guys have a, a real sort of stable of beers that are readily available, and you mm -hmm. know, we'll go through them. Like, obviously, you're drinking the, the Pearl Snap, the German Pills. Absolutely. Yeah. Really, really solid. I mean, it's delicious beer, awesome. Like, Thank I mean, you. Re yeah, really nice. It's got like that nice bitterness, but like a nice clean finish, uh, great hot weather beer. What's, what's your thinking on, on that one? Absolutely. So, I mean, uh, this was something, you know, one of the beers that we were super hot to trot about, you know, all four of us all together from the very beginning. It was, uh, we, uh, if you're familiar with Victory Prima Pills, oh, yeah. that was a big inspiration, that or Trumer Pills was a big inspiration for this beer. Um, we, uh, we all kind of love that, that kind of in your face German bitter style. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's nice. It's, 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 it's very it's, hop forward for yeah, sure, you for know, sure. and it's, it's got it a nice crispness kinda. to it. And, yeah, and then it finishes dry and then kind of goes away, except for that little bit of lingering hop bitterness. Yeah, absolutely. But that bitterness actually makes you want to take another sip, and it's always followed yep. by 10 or 12 more. <laughs> That's how that kind of stuff kind of works. Oh, yeah. And then Peacemaker, I mean, this is an award-winning beer. I mean, it's a pale Absolutely. ale. Yeah. Uh, uh, extra pale? Or it's an extra, extra pale, pale ale. So what's the designation there of extra pale ale versus a pale? Extra pale ale really isn't a, uh, a defined style at this point. There's no uh, BJCP um, or the, the Beer Judge certification program definition of an extra pale ale. We wanted to use that definition to be extra pale, like it was a very light bodied, oh, very okay. easy to drink beer. Yeah, I found, I mean, I found it was, it was subtle, but it was still flavorful, but it was Absolutely. super easy to drink. So a lot of people, they think when they see extra pale ale, they're gonna get this really hop forward, kind oh, of stronger it. beer, right. which uh, it, it, it wasn't at all what we were going for. It's actually more classified as like an English, uh, style summer ale. And I believe you won an award, GABF we uh, did. Great yeah. American Beer Brewing, Brewing or Beer Festival? A beer Festival. Beer Festival? Beer yeah. Brewing, ah, it's all the same. It's all the same. Beer <laughs> Festival, so, but no, but still, you guys won, like last year, you guys won an yeah, award we, for Yeah, we had uh, been brewing for four months and we uh, we actually pulled a silver medal for the Which is, I mean, for people to have context for that kind of thing, there's like, you know, on average, around 4,000 entries per year in those, and it's just, it's insane. The it's, kind of yeah, it's pretty, pretty intense. I mean, uh, the category we won the medal in was uh, a pretty well-trafficked category, yeah. too, with, uh, I think, 60 other beers in there. And uh, to pull silver medal out of that your first that's year, pretty, we... Yes, that's, 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 that's challenging a little up to, though, isn't it? You yeah. know, in a way, it's like the pressure's on, you got some other new beers, and but, you know, still at the same time, you still want it, you know? Like oh, that's, absolutely. That's the, like you absolutely. said, it's a humbling it was, thing. It was such a, a great thing for us to win yeah. a medal for that, and uh, we did a little partying afterwards. Funny enough, <laughs> I, I imagine there's some beer drunk at that festival. So oh, just a few just, here just and there. Hint. It's mostly just tasters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a giant stack. Yeah. <laughs> so behind us is uh, a Fire Eagle, mm -hmm. um, your IPA. Uh, again, really nice, I mean, great citrus, kind of grassy hops, uh, big middle body, but again, nice, nice, nice light, dry, but still just, that bitterness at the back of your throat finish. Absolutely, so I mean, staying in the same vein of uh, being super quaffable, super drinkable to uh, kind of fit our hot climate. Um, I love IPAs, I love drinking IPAs when I go out, and this is a city where we go out a lot, mm -hmm. you know. That's a function of the city, obviously. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just part of culture here, it's part of life. And uh, in order to make a beer that, that fits the Austin culture um, in going out, you know, it, it couldn't be a seven and a half percent alcohol beer. It had to be a nice, light, dry IPA, one that you could, you know, have one to five of yeah, yeah. out at the uh, the bar over the course of an evening, and and still be able to, you know, converse with other people without falling on your face. That's, that's important. <laughs> important in the evening like that. Absolutely. So I mean, it, it stays in that same vein of being super drinkable, but it's a super flavorful yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really very fragrant up front. For Absolutely. Sure. I, I love the. I love hoppy flavored beers, but the the extreme bitterness is not really my thing. It's yeah, it's uh, it's like over salting a dish to me almost. So I, I try and keep the bitterness balanced, but I I throw tons of hops into to the beer itself, and that's just to bring the the fragrance and the yeah. the flavor. Kind of toward the end of the process where you put the absolutely put the stuff in. And there's that. there's some people that really chase after bitterness, yeah. you know, and. Everybody has a different palate, you know, so it's uh, if we can please one or everybody with at least one or, you know, two of our beers, then then we've definitely done our job. Speaking of a palate-pleasing beer, one of my personal favorites, the Black Thunder, a Schwartz beer. And the Schwartz beer. Schwartz beer. <laughs> um, what was I thinking there? Um, well, it was one of those things where 
it, it was one of it was almost a forgotten style, the the black lager, a German true black lager. And it's lagered again, so it's it's it's, it's a, a cold fermented, yeah, yeah lager process. Beer. So it, it makes a drier, cleaner beer, um, and most people assume with a uh, a dark beer that it's going to be heavy, yeah, yeah. full bodied, smoky, chocolatey, smoky, overly roasty, so, yeah, sweet, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's not the case at all with the Black Thunder. It's a, a very light bodied beer. It's got a very slight roast to it because we use special black malts. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hopped very similar to the Pilsner. So it's a pretty hop forward dark beer as well. And it's just, it's really drinkable even during the summer. Yeah, yeah. It's one of my so. personal favorites. I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll declare that my favorite in advance, and, but I'll continue on. Okay, you know, I, No, I really, I love like Schwartz, Schwartz beers. I've had a few in, like when you go to Czech and stuff, and and, yeah. and, and black lagers there just blow your mind. It's it's just a great fun beer. It's it's the one that I love getting people's reaction out of the best because I'm like they're yeah, like I don't like dark beers. Especially when you feel like during a tasting or something, you're yeah. pouring, they'll be like, wait a minute. Um, let me think. We've got Missile Drop Kick on. I think I, you know, yeah. that's a double IPA, which means you're sort of starting to step up into the, into the sort of West Coast big boy territory. Or how does that? How do you characterize that? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we started out with the foundation of our, uh, you know, kind of classic styles that we, you know, produce consistently, and then from there it was like, well, now we're gonna show people that yeah, it's we can make a extremely big beer with tons of hops in it. Um, you know, it's it's not just suiting our style to stay conservative. We we love those big beers too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, we we uh, there was over a hundred and ninety five pounds per thirty barrels uh, of wow. hops in each one of those beers. It's hardcore. So uh, they were big. Missile Dropkick was one that they were both our anniversary beers, and Flying Headbutt was the other one. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds delicious. So the Flying Headbutt. Oh well, they're they're both delicious. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Either that's way, you're ending up on the ground. You yeah, know, so. <laughs> I, I'm drinking um, what's a beer that's coming out shortly. It sounds like it's it's yeah. sort of moved past experimental into the the real deal with the Einhorn, which is really delicious. Like I mean, it's a Thank Berliner you. Weiss. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, it's got a, like a lovely like tart sour character through it. Again, not it's that it's just but it just it sits on the back of the tongue. It's just delicious. Like, Absolutely, yeah. So. Uh, it was one of those things, you know, what's more refreshing than something that's slightly sour, almost like a shandy or yeah, it actually, you know, that's, that's a margarita what it really me or of, something yeah. like that during the summertime. So, uh, you know, a Berliner Weiss is one of those other styles that is really going to kind of go on the way of the dodo as far as brewing goes. You know, it's, uh, I, it, you know, to try and find a German produced Berliner Weiss, I think there's only like one brewery still producing that yeah. commercially. And there's a handful of people in the United States doing it, so we thought that would be a great addition to our lineup. You know, give our give a give a try at a sour beer, which is outside of the traditional brewing styles. Again, mm -hmm. you know, so constantly we're just trying to build on that that traditional style foundation that we started with. Show people, yes, we can do sour beers. Yes, we can do these big hoppy monsters too. Yeah, but it's interestingly, I think all the beers we discussed thus far, mm -hmm. um, these are all traditional ingredients. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's like there's no add, like additional, you know, crazy stuff put into Absolutely. it. It is like you know, water, barley, hops, and some mysterious yeast that comes from somewhere. But, Absolutely. Uh, but you know that. But so that. So I think we talked earlier off camera about this. But that's you, you guys in a sense wanted to show, hey, we we can do. I mean. The interesting thing with the basics, but the basics are hard to do well. But you Absolutely. guys are showing you can do the, the foundation of brewing here. Absolutely. I mean, well, I live my life in a, in a certain way, too, and I, I live by a certain standard that I, the finest things to me are very simple things that are done exceptionally well. Your logo, for example. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's just a simple A with a star, but, you know, it, it, it suits Austin, who is so... We're so design heavy here. Yeah, and yeah. It's simple, but it's iconic. It's not gimmicky, and that's what we're really going for with our branding. And the beers. With the beers as well, too. I mean, it, it's it's keeping things simple but delicious. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one, this one, you know, again, it's just, it's the, the one of the ultimate session beers. Yeah, you can session this all day. Um, so that's, I mean, I mean, you're gonna have some other stuff in the future. We talked a little bit about some of your super special releases. I think Sputnik was one you'd mentioned. Absolutely. Um, other stuff you got like probably down the road. I mean, now you've got like one of the challenges perhaps, you're just cranking, you know, like yeah. but the future, you're probably looking at some experimental stuff perhaps. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
now that uh, the four of us owners, you know, we've, we've started to get into a point where we've now got six t full time employees that are helping take the workload. Yeah, off of guys, us. Like, yeah. That's pretty amazing. Like, so, like 10, 10 people like, going 10, that's, 10 that's people, awesome. yeah. I mean, it's, I never thought I'd be anybody's boss. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Anybody's, yeah. No, nah, we'll stay okay. with the boss. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's really a great thing. You know, we have a great staff on hand and, um, you know, now that, that some of that workload is being taken away from us, now we're starting to experiment with some barrel aging and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and fun things that we really like playing around with. Um, but we really wanted to showcase that, that traditional style of brewing. Yeah, no, it's, it's, first it's and foremost. done really well. Well, Will, I mean, this has been a great experience. Thank you so much for, you know, letting us come and shoot you here and, and like, like do this video. It was really, really cool. It's awesome learning about what you guys do and just a real pleasure. Thank you so much. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's been an amazing time. Yeah, so... Cheers. Cheers. And thank you for the authentic interview. This was awesome stuff, awesome beer. It's delicious. No problem.